Hey everybody, it's Jim here, and today's video is going to be all about offset guitars, specifically the Jazzmaster and the Jaguar and their hardware. We're going to be installing a new mastery bridge onto this Momose, as well as comparing it to a Japanese one. We're going to be talking about bridges and breaking a few stereotypes that have somehow become just thought of as common facts in regards to hardware, how guitars have to be set up, what string gauges have to be used with these guitars, and dispelling them via facts and logic, and most importantly, by example. Now real quick, I do want to use this pink Jaguar that is already fully set up to provide some context to why I don't believe all of the advice given when it comes to these offset guitars is entirely accurate, nor should you take everything as a fact. A lot of people say you have to have a minimum of 10s, but really 11s, 12s, to be able to reliably use the vintage kind of bridge here without the saddles being an issue as far as the strings popping out of them. This guitar has nines on it. And I'll have you know this, as somebody who orders a lot of guitars from Fender Japan, their Jaguars all come with nines on them. So, obviously, it can be done. But for the context of this, this guitar has the American vibrato unit on it. It has the Japanese vintage style bridge. It does have a one degree shim in the neck, but the action is pretty low on it. And if I hammer this thing home, it's not gonna go as far as the strings jumping out of the saddles whatsoever, no matter how hard I abuse it. Not a single jump. So anybody who tells you you can't play nines on one of these guitars, you can't play tens, you can't do any of that stuff, you gotta play flat round 13s, no. That is simply not true. And one last thing about the vintage bridge itself before we carry on with the rest of this video here. People say that you have to remove that in order to have strings not pop out regardless of string gauge. I don't agree with that and again this is something that I found through my own practice and my own kind of messing around with setups. I did mention this guitar has a one degree shim in it but a key thing to keep in mind when you're setting up these guitars you have to create the right break angle which is the angle that the string is coming back from the bridge into the actual vibrato unit itself. If you do those two things you can achieve a pretty decent action because this is not a guitar that I struggle to play. The action on this is actually quite comfortably low without any buzzing or fretting out when bending notes. You can do it. There's not really a big issue with that. More so the issue comes with any of these bridges. You want to make sure there's not too much play and Loctite in some cases could do a lot on the actual screws that go into the actual body itself to hold the guitar into place as far as the height of it. Doing those things, adding in an X shim where necessary, and not every offset guitar does need it, Take your time setting these guitars up. You'll be amazed how many of these kind of facts that you read about on the internet don't always apply. Now the vibrato on this Momose is very commonly found on Japanese models, whether it is a brand like this or Fender Japan themselves, as far as the design goes and also how it actually works in practical usage. So you do have a lock involved with this. Everything else is pretty much modeled very similarly to an American based unit, except for the arm. The arm angle on this is going to be a little bit shorter. I'm gonna be showing you side by side the mastery which was much more accurate to the American arm angle and how high it sits up versus one of these Japanese import units and that to some people can be a deal breaker. Some people like the easier access that the arm being a little higher up provides. If you do have a Japanese vibrato unit, I don't necessarily think that it requires replacing but if you're somebody who really, really, really can't stand the positioning of the arm, and I know several people like that, especially in the comments section, I've actually had questions about this, what you could do is use a vice grip, have the arm actually removed from the guitar, and bend it a little bit to get it to a more 
preferred position that fits your tastes. All right, so just a quick side-by-side -side so you can get a visual idea here. This is the Mastery Vibrato, and this is off of a 2018 Fender Hybrid Jazz Master. You can notice one thing immediately on face value before we turn it to the side and we look at the arm angle that I was just talking about. There is no lock on the Mastery version where there is on this and just like on the American counterparts by Fender. This is made of entirely stainless steel. This is the polished version, so it's a little bit more expensive than the typical raw one. And looking at the back of the units, you can tell there are a few differences with that as well, mainly being the way that you adjust the arm stands out. You would need to loosen this nut right here and then take a flathead screwdriver to it to be able to loosen or tighten how much play is within the arm. It is not recommended to remove this arm no matter what. This will stay in even if you're putting it in a hard shell case. I have done it for years with a traditional fender vibrato, so if you're somebody that might be on the fence about it, it's not something to really worry about. It's not gonna get damaged, your guitar's not gonna get screwed up. With the Japanese one, you can tell it's just not as well engineered as the mastery to that extent. You still have some control with the Kala and all of that, but it's a little bit of an upgrade, so to speak, but we won't know how big of an upgrade it'll be until we actually swap out the unit off of the Momose and put in the mastery. And here's the guitar finished with the mastery vibrato installed. It took me all of 10 minutes total. All you really have to do for that, I didn't feel like it was something worth filming remove the strings, remove the other one, it's only the screws that are keeping it on, place in the new one, restring the guitar, and you're pretty much good to go. Minus, if you wanna do little extra things like I did, I gave a little bit of lemon oil to the fingerboard and I polished the frets. <laughs> Now keeping in mind this video wasn't solely about the Mastery Vibrato, we did go over a few other things in regards to the hardware of offset guitars. I do feel like I should give you my initial impressions of the unit. Is this a must do upgrade? If you have a Japanese guitar, if you have a Squire guitar, or if you have something even higher end than that like my Fender American Vintage 65 Jazzmaster, I would say no. Do I notice a difference when using it? slightly, especially compared to the American vintage one. I didn't think that there would be too much in it between that, but this feels like it's such a precision, fine-tuned piece of hardware in comparison to the actual American unit. It's just that next kind of extra three or four percent that you're not gonna get. And is that worth the price? Honestly, considering that the polished version of this, I believe, is $220 now new, the unpolished one, I think it's $20 or $30 less than that. I would not say that they're mandatory upgrades. However, if you have a guitar that you absolutely love and you want to get that little extra little out of it, this is a really good way to do it. And it doesn't look out of place. And part of the reason I did it on this guitar, I found it strange that the custom order did request the Mastery Bridge but it didn't request the Master of Vibrato. So I thought, you know what? I've never owned one of those. I've always wanted to give one a try and I can't think of a better instrument that would be more fitting to give it a go with. And I'm very happy I did because now, totally done. Nothing else needs to be kind of addressed. And honestly, this didn't even need to be addressed. It's just a nice little upgrade. 
That's all I have for you guys today. If you found any of this useful or helpful, feel free to let me know in the comments down below and to hit the like button. I know it's boring and annoying hearing me say this stuff, but part of the perks of being a YouTuber, I guess. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel while you're at it. <laughs> and I will see you on the next video. Take it easy, everybody.